International trade in goods and services is the oldest and the most prominent form of the international division of labor. Well, that's what we have all been hearing and that's what it has been going all together. Consumers in countries may be exposed to the new markets and products as a result of global trade. Balance of trade is calculated with the export of goods minus import of goods and balance of trade and services comes with export of services minus import of services. Good morning and welcome to the first session, Chapter 1, Unit 3, First Semester BCom, Pre-Reforms of Indian Economy, where we are going to speak about India's foreign trade. Foreign trade policy does not need a great introduction, but nevertheless, we know that the mutual exchange of goods that we have been doing with many foreign countries actually leads to the concept of this foreign trade business. India is no new to this foreign trade. Why? Because we have been doing international trade for decades and for centuries altogether. And our foreign trade exports have immensely grown in the year 2020-21 to that of $686 billion. And we are slowly looking forward to make it a $1 trillion altogether. Now just look at it here, in terms of buying and selling alone, the transactions and the foreign trade that has taken shape altogether from the import and the export part, we have been making a great amount of growth. Why? Because India has started becoming the manufacturing hub of this world. And we all believe it in true nature and sense that India is slowly becoming the superpower in terms of economy. So what is going to happen in the coming years is that we are trying to become the leaders in foreign exchange and in foreign trade. Now, what is exactly foreign trade? International trade in goods and services is the oldest and the most prominent form of the international division of labor. Well, that's what we have all been hearing and that's what it has been going all together. Now, the foreign trade is defined as the purchasing and selling of items beyond the national borders to different countries. So we know that when you buy and when you sell, that is the export and import business of any country would be defined under the category called as foreign trade. Now, it is also known as international trade or external trade. Yes, we do interchangeably use words in order to define foreign trade. But then the concept of trade refers to the purchase and sale transaction that enable manufactured commodities from your country to be sold or to be provided to consumers worldwide. Now, this is where a country starts gaining its prominence or its importance as an exporter of great value. Why? Because when you compare India and China, India and Japan or any other country for that matter, the quality of good that comes out from your country will be made as the most valuable product that is available across the globe. So in that sense, what happens is that people definitely ask this question, how are we going to take this concept of overseas trade. So we find that this overseas trade is always being put across in terms of growth, in terms of the aspects of planning. And we want to see that how our country's good fare among the top 10 in the world. Followed by, what are the characteristics of foreign trade altogether? Now, the export that is originating from a country and import to the receiving country is the product that has been transferred or sold. So, let's say that from India, when you sell a product and it has been bought over in Egypt, then automatically what happens here is that the product gets transferred from India to that of Egypt. Now, the balance of payments is what we are very much concerned about when we talk about on the current account. Now, what is the balance of trade all about the balance of payments factor? Now, whenever we are buying and selling, it is not mandatory every time that you just clear the account by paying the cash. So there will be always an adjustment in terms of imports and exports that comes between two countries. So what happens is that the imports and exports will get adjusted altogether. So that is where you need to understand how we are trying to make the balance factor here. Followed by consumers in countries may be exposed to the new markets and products as a result of global trade. Now this is very very important. 
Some years back, India was not a leader in terms of manufacturing electronics or homegrown products, especially in the world of digital. But today, if you look into India, we have our own products that are equally competing across the well-known brand like that of Sony or Samsung or that of Bose or any other system that we are talking about. The reason is that Consumers have started liking Indian products and they believe personally that Indian products have value which can go further. Now, when we are talking about foot clothing or spare parts or any kind of oil jewelry, all those kind of things are available for the international market and India has been a very, very prominent player when it comes to this particular aspect. So we have believed that foreign trade is the root cause through which you can improve your exports, improve your GDP and this is a direct revenue earner for our country. Followed by what is the foreign trade in India? Now the foreign trade in India goes to the era of BC that is before Christ when we have been talking about trading with hundreds and thousands of countries across the globe. Now we don't have an exact economic data talking about how India had exported its good or what kind of goods India exported and under which kingdom altogether. But of course we do have this track as per the historian saying very very clearly that yes we have been doing this business for quite a long time or quite some time altogether. Now, whenever we talk about the text that has been quoted all along, so you would be able to see that the, uh, the transactions has been as old as the 100th century AD altogether. And then we will be probably even looking about the Europeans trading with India, the Portuguese, or when we talk about the English, when we talk about the French. So we have been trading on spices, we have been trading on uh, the goods altogether. And this is as old as dated from the 14th, 98 onward that's about the 15th century that we are talking about so nevertheless india has always been a very very prominent trader trading nation altogether with the europeans as well as with the other countries in the world now moving further between 1947 and 1991 this is the most interesting part why because that 50 long years, what has been India's subjection in terms of the foreign trade? How has been India subjected to the FDI, that is the foreign direct investment? Unfortunately, in that last 50 years, when we are talking about 1947 to 1991, the foreign trade was restricted. Why? Because we struggled to get our freedom and we started concentrating only on the internal growth aspects. We gave a lot of importance to the public sector union. We gave a lot of importance to the homegrown countries and we wanted India to develop more from a job security standpoint. So what we were trying to do is that we were trying to make every sector come under the priority of government and we were not thinking about exports and imports at that point of time. We were not ready to open up our economy at all. After 1991, the liberalization, privatization story, yes, India started opening its door and we started becoming one of the leading exporters in the world. And that's a very well-known story for all of us. So after 1991, dramatically, we started improving. The reason being is that we were getting a lot of options and opportunities in terms of the privatization factor. Now, moving further, the exports and imports that we have been talking about, India now exports about 7,500 commodities to approximately 190 countries and buys about 6,000 commodities from 140 nations. So that's more or less a very good give and take situation that we are talking about. The exports and imports aren't limited to commodities. We are also in terms of services that we are talking about. Now, if you look into the entire picture, you cannot say that India is only an exporter which has been talking about making revenue in hundreds and thousands just by exporting goods altogether. 
But then what India is today is that it mutually exchanges good. It, it mutually goes on to a position where we buy and sell from different angles, from different aspects altogether. So what happens in our country is that when we talk about this word foreign trade itself, you will be surprised to see that somewhere down the lane, we have been working on a very, very significant factor of creating bilateral relationship between many countries across the globe and that's what we have now become world's number one trading nation altogether. So you can just look at the numbers, 7,500 commodities, 190 countries. Now this is where we are expanding altogether followed by the exports and imports. That's what we have been doing altogether and services also coming up in a very, very big way here. Now, India's trade policy, what we have been doing, India's trade policy is with different factors. So we start with Make in India, Digital India, Skill India, Startup India, Ease of Doing Business Initiative, which were all launched between the year 2015 and 20. That was one of the most important year I would like to talk about. Why is these factors now coming into foreign trade? That is where we need to pay attention. We do not believe that an export import business is all about buying and selling commodities. That's not the intention of foreign trade in India. The intention is to make India more viable by enhancing the capacity of India, enhancing the value of Indian. So what we did is that first we started producing in India and that's why we bought this program called as Make in India. The next thing is that we went on a digital mode, digitalizing the entire country with the access to technology, use of the best technology, followed by we started skilling our own Indians, our own factors so that you are capable enough and then we gave that open ground, the platform for many startups to come up so that we can increase our production capacity followed by the ease of doing business. So once you have opened up your doors, once you have reduced the norms and regulations, the restriction patterns altogether, every country would be interested to partner with India in terms of trade and business. And that's exactly what we did in terms of making India much more skilled altogether, much more available for the entire setup. The India's foreign trade policy. It also provides a framework for increasing export of goods and services, creating value and increasing value addition in the country. Now, that's very, very important. Why? Because you are increasing the value of the country in terms of creating jobs and taking it forward. Now, let's move forward here. The foreign trade policy statement also tells that for every product, for every market strategy that needs to be promoted, we need good infrastructure. We need to improve the entire trade ecosystem. Probably India was one country where we have seen that the system was not so well developed. The system was not ready to accept and take it forward. But nevertheless, we were ready to build in a system. We were ready to build in an entire activity that was required. So right now we are trying to concentrate on trade related activities by improving the infrastructure, by improving the services. And we as Indian, we are ready to respond to the external problems by staying on the fast changing lane altogether. Some years back, India was completely resilient to the factor that how am I going to answer to the problems of the external trade? But today, India is proactive. We are ready to answer to the questions even before the problem is going to come forward. We are ready with the changes and structurally, we are getting ourselves geared up for the factor to become the world number one in terms of the economic growth altogether. Now the balance of trade, we all know that the balance of trade is calculated with the export of goods minus import of goods and balance of trade and services comes with export of services minus import of services. So we all know that somewhere this balance of trade is a very, very important concept that we are trying to focus upon. The more you export and less you import, automatically the balance of trade starts going up altogether, which means to say that your value starts going up. 
but higher the imports and lesser the exports, that means we come under the negativity factor. Now, what we have been trying to do is that somewhere down the lane, we are trying to increase the export both in terms of goods as well as in terms of services, trying to make this even more stronger altogether. And that's what is the aim of our country in the long run. Now, the balance of trade, the top export items that we have been talking about, petroleum products, precious stones, drug formulations, biologicals, gold and other precious metals. These are our top exported items from India, which makes us really a revenue giver. Plus, we are also going to talk about the factors of India's merchandise export is less than its merchandise imports this is where we are struggling why because somewhere down the lane we have to be very careful about this factor that the export function is lesser than that of import function still india's merchandise balance is between from 2009 to 14 14 to 19 although the most of its improvement in the latter period was on the account of more or less that 50 percent decline that what we have been seeing altogether so this is somewhere a very very interesting factor for all of us to understand to grow with and to determine how things have been going across in our favor or in you know the situation that we have have been demanding for. Now, the top import items, again, the most important thing is the crude petroleum, gold, petroleum products, coal and coke that have been importing. We all know that India is still dependent on the energy factor. And somewhere down the lane, we have not been able to create enough reserves in terms of petroleum. And petroleum has been one of the largest importing material or the items that we have been talking about in the last few years. India's service export is more than its service import. So that means in the service sector, we are the leaders because when it comes to IT and IT enabled services, we have been doing a fantastic job. We have been trying to make our country the best, the most reliable factor altogether, starting with all the big names like TCS. Infosys, HCL, Wipro, Cognizant, any of the companies that you can talk about, India has been one of the leaders in terms of the services exports business. Followed by India's net services surplus has been steadily declining with relation to the GDP, a matter of worry that we have been talking about. Service surplus finance is about 50% of the merchandise deficit. So that is also a matter of worry for us. Why? Because on the deficit factors that we have been talking about. Followed by the top 10 export commodities, we are talking about petroleum products, pearl, precious, semi-precious stones and all those factors that have been coming about. The drug formulations, biologicals that have been coming into the picture, gold and other precious metal jewelry that we have been talking Iron and steel, yes, that's also very, very important thing that we are looking into electric machinery and equipment, the organic chemicals that we have been talking about, RMG in terms of the cotton, including accessories, the motor vehicles that have been going about, the marine products, all these factors have been really a very, very important factor for all of us. Why? Because these are the areas which we have been concentrating on a large basis in terms of growth, in terms of the expansion factors altogether. Followed by uh, the top 10 countries to which India's exports will matter the most is that we are exporting it to the US, to the UAE, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, United Kingdom, Netherlands, Germany, Bangladesh and that of Nepal. So to when it comes to our neighbors, of course, India has always been a very, very prominent country in terms of exports, in terms of the factor that we have been growing in a very, very large scale, in a large growth centric factor altogether. And all our neighbors have been really happy about the factor that when we have been talking about about this export factor. When we talk about the import, again, these are the import commodities that we are talking about, petroleum, gold, petroleum products, the coal, pearl, purchase item, electronic components. Yes, we are concentrating on that because the last time when we had the semiconductor problem, India is now trying to focus on that. And with the advent of iPhone being manufactured in India, I think we are taking up here a very big space. We will soon become an exporter here. Organic chemicals, industrial machinery, iron and steel. These are the areas 
where we are importing. The balance of payments, of course, very important, statistically summarizes for a specific period of time the economic transaction with that of the rest of the world. And now we see that the, you know, the balance of payment is actually favoring India. Of course, we do have a huge deficit in place. But what we are seeing is that as a growing country, as a leader in exports, we will definitely have a stand in terms of making our country even more stronger. Now, the India's balance of payment has witnessed a great movement in the year 1991. The reserve stood at 572. Now, uh, actively speaking, we have concentrated and crossed more than $600 billion. Our forest reserves include gold, special drawing rights, and the reserves that from the position of IMF. So we have been able to make a fantastic growth altogether here. Now, the global trade position, India has been growing at 5.7 percentage altogether. And now, you know, because of the slowdown and the other economic problems that are coming in like recession, our growth rate has completely come down to a larger extent as far as possible. Now, the external debt that we have been talking about has been significantly seeing a large and large kind of factors where you have seen that external commercial activities and borrowings have been working out to a greater extent. We have increased a lot. We have borrowed a lot of money. Of course, we have been working on the external debt. Most of the countries have been going through this cycle. The external debt is a matter of concern for us. But nevertheless, our exports can go further and substitute it altogether. Now, who regulates it? The Director General of Foreign Trade is the regulatory authority of the foreign trade business in India. It's located in Delhi. It's the control factor here. All the policies and procedures for that of foreign trade is given up by the DGFT from time to time. So the Director General of Foreign Trade is the final authority when it comes to the international trade. With this, I come to the end of this particular session. I do believe that all the inputs given here would be very helpful to you both in terms of theory as well as in terms of practical. In the upcoming sessions, we will be learning more about the different other forms of economic reforms. But until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.